I can barely remember when there wasn't a basket being made in the house. When I started my self-making baskets, it has been about 20 years. I was in the military, and I spent 17 years there. Then when I got out, I came home, and I didn't know what I was going to do, so I said, well, I'll work for farmers. So I was working for a farmer one time, and, and uh, I went up to the land, or up to the uh, band office, and uh, they had baskets up there. And this is the kind of baskets that was uh, being, I, I saw. I looked at it, I said, I can do that. And the person said, well, make me one and show me. So I said, well, I gotta get my stuff together I need. So I went out and I bought, my next door neighbor had a Boy Scout axe. Boy Scout axe, this one, matter of fact. This here is a Boy Scout axe. And this is what I started making baskets with. This is what I used to cut, split my logs, chop them down. <laughs> Not very big, mm -hmm. but it worked. Nobody can turn around and say, hey, how can you work? How can you live on making baskets? For the past 20 years, that's what I've been doing. I've been working, making baskets, and this is how I've been doing it. Making, making my baskets, splitting the logs, hewing them out, pounding them, uh, preparing the wood. I make my baskets, and the last 15 years I've been selling wood to other people, basket wood. <laughs> yeah, like right now I got, uh, let me think, there's a hundred and, there's 65 bundles to one person I gotta get, 30 to another one, 30 potato baskets to one person, 25 to another, so there's about five or six farmers that still use potato baskets. Um, the white wood, I saw to right the brown, and I saw to separate it. The sap wood, I saw to to uh, basket makers up here in Maine. The brown, I saw to other people. I got ten bags, what I consider ten bags, which is seventy rolls. I got to get ready for the basket makers in Canada that uh, buys wood off me. What I'm doing right now, a lot of people can't do. I don't understand why, but they say that they, they can't judge the wood or don't realize what they're doing. Listen. Okay. I notched the end so that it's on a growth thing. And what's happening right now is it's following that growth thing down. First, I'm taking off <clears throat> the bark. What I'm doing is I'm blocking it out, but I'm also, this here, I'm also taking the pieces that are gonna flake off. I'm following the green. The pounding machine here, it came from a foundry. Okay, some of the guy, Canadian boys were in, uh, they went to a foundry mm -hmm. and, well, one of them was working there. They went to uh, see him and they saw the pounder, right? This, something similar to this, yeah. but industrial strength. And 
they turned around and saw it, and they looked at it, and they said, you know, if we had something like that, we could use it to pound a wood with. Now, all this wood is ready to go. Yeah, it's plugging in. Mm -hmm.